Hey guys, what's up? It's uh, your friendly neighborhood musician, Ernesto Fuentes here, back with another ranking video. Uh, today, I'm going to be ranking Theater of Tragedy. Now, for those of you who don't know who Theater of Tragedy is, they were a one of the pioneers, one of the earliest pioneers of the goth metal genre, and not to mention they were also the first, I believe they were the first band to originate the uh, Beauty and the Beast vocal dynamic. Now, for those of you who don't know what the uh, Beauty and the Beast vocal dynamic is, is they, it's essentially when you take a female vocalist and a male vocalist, and you have the female doing the very clean, beautiful, melodic vocals, and you get the male vocalist to do the death metal grunts you know the death metal growls and stuff that's the beauty and the beast dynamic now i'm going to be ranking their albums and all seven of them i'm not going to count any eps live albums any of those and i'm going to rank them from my least favorite to my top favorite this is going to be a little tough because i don't hate any of their albums even though one of them is particular like even though a couple of them are particularly polarizing uh i'm just not gonna like throw any shade at any albums because i personally listen to all seven of them and well and i admit i actually liked all of them which is why it was a very very difficult thing for me to do so, in that regard, I'm going to get started with my least favorite album. That, of course, being Assembly. Now, Assembly is actually the last album that Theater of Tragedy released with original vocalist Liv Christine. And it's also the second album that was more centered towards the whole industrial techno future pop type of sound now i didn't really like this album i mean i liked it but it wasn't my favorite there are only three songs that i could get behind those of course being automatic lover uh let you down and the last track of the album motion the first two because they just had such a nice like beat you know that you could just kind of go with you know, and motion just being this very sort of entrancing slow jam in a way. Like, it's very nice, very soothing in a way. Now, again, this isn't my... Now, I'm not... I don't hate this album, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's it's the worst thing they've ever released. Because in all honesty... I don't think Theater of Tragedies ever really released anything terrible. So, this is my least favorite. Alright. Next up, I gotta say, Musique. Which is actually their first album. After, you know, their first uh, album that featured the whole, again, electro-pop, you know, future-pop like, sort of sound. I personally like this one a lot better than Assembly, for the reason being the lyrical content. Now, the reason why I love this album far more than Assembly is really because, again, the beats are much better, and not to mention the lyrical content just makes it even more interesting, because Theater of Tragedy were always known for singing in the in the old English style, and they had that whole gothic sort of vibe, and then when you take this album, you realize they are singing more about modern living, you know, like, for instance, uh, like, commuting to work every day, or, you know, stuff like the internet, and, like, all, you know, all these modern things that, you know, were huge, you know, back then you know, that became huge at that point in time. I personally like this album a lot more, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's the best Theater of Tragedy album because, in all honesty, 
it's one of the more polarizing because a lot of the a lot of the diehard fans would just crap all over this album because of the very fact that they departed from the old gothic sort of thing to you know to electropop and to a lot of fans it's just it was kind of like a slap in the face you know but personally i'm not a purist like that granted i tend to be at times but i'm not gonna dump all over this album because again it's not a terrible album it's not a great it's not a great album but it's not abhorrently bad so if like i said if i had to choose between this one and assembly i would choose music so there's that now the next one i gotta rank is the next one i gotta rank is definitely aegis which is actually the last album that where uh theater of tragedy you know use that whole gothic aesthetic now this one is actually again it's not a terrible album but it's not in my opinion it's not their best either you know i mean it's good even though it just it sounds a little similar to what lacuna coil were doing at the time or maybe a little later so this is actually their uh their third album this is their third album and it's also their last album to you know in in the whole gothic style now the interesting thing about this album and this is what i really liked about it it was the fact that each song was about a sort of mythological character you know like you know case in point the uh the first song cassandra being about the uh, the great ancient greek uh prophet of sorts uh the oracle i should say uh and then of course venus being about well venus the roman goddess of love and so on and so forth now the sound quality is not it, it just sounds a little a little too poppy for me nothing wrong with that but it wasn't really my cup of tea so so that was just really my take on it again not a terrible album but not in my honest opinion not their best so so there's that all right next up we have their very last album ever and their second album with new vocalist Nell Ziegland who was actually the replacement for long original vocalist Liv Christine and that of course being Forever is the World now this album is very melancholy it's very it just sounds so sad you know because it's it's like that it's this is like their goodbye album before they went on tour for the uh for the last curtain call shows and the reason why i rank this a little higher than aegis is mostly because i personally like the vibe on this one a little more it was kind of like theater of tragedy kind of going back to their gothic roots but at the same time they just went pretty dark in this album like you could just feel it when you listen to it like take a moment to listen to the album from beginning to end and you just feel this sense of dreariness like this sense of sadness like it's like they know this is their their goodbye their last goodbye their last hurrah if you will and the reason i rank this a little lower is mostly because at times it just got too sad not not saying anything wrong with not saying that there's anything wrong with it but it just sounded too dreary and i'm not gonna lie like i kind of wanted to cry at times because it's like oof you know it's like an at the end of an era you know like the end of of a dynasty of sorts it's kind of like the season fin it's kind of like a series finale 
you know, when you uh, of your favorite show, you know, it's like you just don't want to see it go, and it just hurts, you know. But um. But yeah, it, it's also it's it's a good album. Their final track, which is the title track, it just feels like such a gut punch, like such an emotional gut punch. I mean, it just like when I listen to it, I was every time I hear it, it's just like. Oof, right in the gut, you know. But yeah, it's it's a great album. Definitely something I would recommend. Uh honestly I recommend almost all of these, with the exception of Assembly. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Alright, now moving on. Uh the next album I gotta the next up album I gotta say, now I'm going into the top three. Uh my third favorite album has got to be Storm. Now, Storm is actually the first album by Theater of Tragedy to feature Nels England. Now, the thing I love about this album is that, again, it, it does the whole gothic rock sort of borderline commercial thing right. I can get behind all of these songs. Now, this is Theater of Tragedy going back to their gothic roots and and just sort of abandoning the uh, the future pop sound that you heard in both Assembly and Music. And in this one, it was actually interesting considering that, and I forgot to mention this in Aegis, that Raymond, the, uh, the male vocalist, actually decided to go with a clean with clean vocals instead of uh the death grunts and you can easily see this in not only Aegis but also in Storm I don't know why he decided to do that but I mean it just it works here considering it kind of takes some of the modern aspects from the previous theater of tragedy albums but they kind of combine it with the old gothic rock aesthetic it's not as heavy as their earlier works but it's a little lighter and it's it's a sound that i can get behind and i personally enjoyed this album quite a bit so yeah this is definitely another that i recommend if you want to kind of just get into gothic rock kind of like a gateway kind of like an entry like a like an appetizer if you will into gothic metal it's like your introductory course it's like a great way to just introduce yourself i mean if you don't want to listen i mean yeah sure you know you got lacuna coil and delane and you know even at some point within temptation but if you really want like a nice proper introduction into you know to gothic rock or gothic metal i definitely recommend storm all right now next up and this is my second favorite album now for these top 2 it was very tough for me to choose because i just love these albums way too much and it was just so difficult I know I could have easily said they both tied, but nope, I'm going to be fair. This is a ranking video. It's not a tier list, so don't get it twisted, all right? Uh, <laughs> but um, but for my number two, I got to say it's, I gotta say their debut, Theater of Tragedy. Now, this album is just great in so many ways because this is, again their introduction their first ever introduction and i think this is like the very first time people heard uh a male and a female vocalist you know especially considering that at this time raymond was doing the death grunts while Liv was just singing very beautifully very melodically and it's like listening to this album makes it feel like you're going to both a classical play and a heavy metal concert all at the same time 
and that's what made this album pretty unique to me because you know you're kind of getting the best of both you're getting that very classical very old school vintage feel you know of like you know like you're going to a shakespearean play you know while at the same time you're going to a heavy metal concert so it's like you know you kind of take both and they just gel so nicely and they go together very beautifully so this is my number two because again it's the production value the sound quality isn't the best but i'm not gonna completely crap on an album because of that because again this album came out in the er in like the early to mid 90s so for that very reason i'm just gonna cut it some slack so honestly like i just don't see any cons with it but there is one album that i prefer over their debut and that album is their second album velvet darkness they fear oh boy where to begin with this album uh this is theater of tragedy in my honest opinion at their best now the thing i just love so much about this album is the atmosphere it's like they took their old formula they took they listened to their first album and they thought you know what how about we try going darker with it and oh my god oh man this was this was quite the joyous trip i enjoyed this album so much because of that whole dark atmosphere it's like it's like you're not even going to a shakespearean play anymore you're going to like a dark a very dark tragedy you know very dark and oh man it it was just it's such a great track and there's one and just the in my opinion the cherry on top of this sunday on top of this very exquisite sunday is the song and when he falleth there is an excerpt like a little piece of a dialogue done by none other than the legendary horror icon himself vincent price in his role in the 1960s film the mask of the red death i mean just the atmosphere and when you hear that that dialogue oh oh man amazing 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 now this album wasn't exactly ranked highly by different you know publications but in my honest opinion and again this these this ranking and just about and you know just any of these ranking videos are all my personal opinion and in my honest opinion velvet darkness they fear is by far their best album and it's just it's the album i can just get behind it's the album i can just listen to over and over and over again and just not get tired of it because it i mean in a way the way i can describe this these two albums my top two favorites uh theater of tragedy and uh, velvet darkness they fear it's kind of like a yin and yang in a way like you got a brighter more you know chris you know like a brighter sound with theater of tragedy's debut album well their self-titled debut and then you get that dark shadow with velvet darkness they fear and it's like both of those albums just meld so beautifully together and it's just like it's like you know you get you know you know when you listen to them in order it's like oh you got the very beautiful you know shakespearean like even borderline shakespearean uh sound of the first theater of tragedy album and then you get this dark and grim and 
foreboding and dare I say even atmospheric sound with Velvet Darkness They Fear. Which is why I said this, you know, making, like, choosing between both of these albums in this ranking was super difficult. Because I love both of these albums so much. But I kind of liked Velvet Darkness They Fear by this much. I liked it more by this much. Which says a lot. So, I mean, if you guys want, like, a very dark and brooding gothic album, I highly recommend Velvet Darkness They Fear. So, there's that. Now, that wraps up my ranking video. Uh, my thoughts on Theater of Tragedy, in all honesty, it's a shame they broke up. I mean, I did mention that in Forever is the World, uh, it just seemed like things weren't exactly working out in the band. I mean, I think if I remember correctly, Nell Ziegland had another band going and uh, and it just became pretty difficult for the rest of them. Not to mention without Liv, it was just, it was pretty difficult considering that, you know, they were the ones that let her go. And, you know, and if I had, and again, you know, between Nell Ziegland and Liv Christine, both vocalists are just phenomenal. Like, they're both very, very special in their own way. You know, now Ziggling kind of has that, you know, very... Very, you know, serene voice. It's like both of them have that whole... That kind of voice, you know, the, the kind of voice that, you know, just soothes you and just, like, makes you feel at ease, you know? And... I mean, that's just really it. Like, I think... Both are great vocalists. I mean, and both are great, you know, for theater of tragedy. And both, I mean, not just theater of tragedy, but just like any gothic metal band at all. Like, any gothic metal band. They will just fit right in. So, there's that. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching this ranking video. I hope you guys like it. I mean, if you guys do, you know... Feel free to subscribe. And to any of any of you fans out there of Theater of Tragedy, how would you rank these albums? How would you go about in ranking these albums? Please, by all means, put them down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys... Let me know how you guys would rank them. So as always, this has been your friendly neighborhood musician, Ernesto Fuentes, signing out. Stay awesome, stay safe out there, but most of all... Stay metal.